What's going on guys, Gums here back again on another MLB The Show 19 video. I have just completed the newest string of Moments Extreme Part 3, the Seriously one, and I've got to say it was one of the hardest things I've had to do in my video game career, definitely the most difficult moments in the game. You know, I talked, I kind of joked about the warning one right here that it was moments mild. It wasn't all that difficult besides a few. This one top to bottom besides maybe one, it was very frustrating, very difficult. And in today's video, I'm going to give you guys all the tips that I have learned. Um, now there's a lot of them, so this should be a long video. I would recommend this uh, challenge because the Gossage, I got to use him in the beta. He was very good. The 95 overall Gossage is probably one of the best, if not the best reliever I've used all year round. So I have no doubt this card is going to be super amazing. So I'm very excited to get some gameplay with him. Uh, but yeah, as always, make sure to leave a like down below. Really, really would help out right now because this gave me so much frustration. I obviously was not the first one to complete it like I was within the caution and warning for these two. Um, I finished it just an uh, hour or so ago and it was tremendous. That being said, let's go on into this one, starting with Sean Green's four homer day. Thankfully, we don't have to hit four home runs in one game. Um, and what I would say with this, I'm not gonna, some of these I'm gonna hop into the game and show you directly what I mean. And I, I guess we could, cause there's one thing that I wanna show you guys. Uh, but the thing with Sean Green is, uh, there is a left-handers pull shift on with him. So what that means is if there's nobody on base that there's going to be a complete wide open left side of the infield and outfield so what you can try to do is be late on your swing if you hit even a grass burner sean green's got enough speed to where you're more than likely going to beat it out and be able to get a double off of it so if you do notice that the bases are empty i'm going to keep resetting it until we get that um that is something i would recommend doing trying to take it opposite field uh, i don't think there's ever going to be one at least on this first try um on three ball counts, this is another big thing. If it's a three ball count, you gotta swing. You have no other choice because at that point, if you walk, that might as well be an out. It does not help you. It's another wasted plate appearance. That being said, if you don't hit a home run or if you don't get an extra base hit in your first at bat, quit. Restart. There's no point. Um, usually you get about four, maybe five at bats within this. So if you don't get an extra base hit your first try, you might not have even enough at bats to try and get the four extra base hits. I did use the X swing. I know some people would say the power swing is better because you do have a big PCI. But for me, I used the X swing and that worked. Now this one took me a good amount of time to do. Um, so see, once again, right here, three, one count. I have to swing pretty much no matter what. Even if I don't like it, if it was over my head, I have to swing because a walk does me no good at this point. Um, the biggest thing for all of these moments is it doesn't matter how good you are. And I wanna really emphasize that. You can be the best player in the world and we have an extra base hit right there. That's a great way to start. But for example, I was watching Coog stream last night. He was doing this moment in particular for over three hours until he beat it. And you guys have saw Coog's play. He's obviously really good. He's highly competitive in the cups that we have. It's all about being lucky at the end of the day. You can square it up, you can time it up, you can wait for your pitch. It doesn't matter sometimes. Sometimes you'll hit it hard right at somebody. So Sean Green, it's gonna take some time for you. Maybe you're gonna get lucky. That's kind of how these um, you know, plate appearance ones happen. Um, but yeah, that's the best I can recommend for you for this one. Oh Christ, talking about the Nationals. This one probably took me the most time, the most attempts that I gave it. And this is very difficult. So so to start off, you're going to want to get on with Victor Robles. That's the key. Of course, they're going to make a lot of annoying catches, but you want to quit until you get on with Victor Robles. You can't start out having six runs, expecting to get that with only two outs. So you have to get on base with Victor Robles, quit until you get on base with him, and then we're going to see what we do from right there. We hit that hard and deep. That actually might be a home run. It's off the wall, so that's just as good. Um, so we're on base with Victor Robles right now, and this is a key thing that you guys have to know. 
they will not try and contest you stealing a base. See, Todd Frazier is literally uh, playing bunt defense. So you're going to be able to get an easy stolen base. If you get a single, you can steal both of those. And then from there, what I recommend, I would say pinch it Howie Kendrick. Now, some people might say you want it for a clutch situation. I would bring him in now and use Michael Taylor, who has 80 speed as a pinch runner. So I would bring in Howie Kendrick right here. And then obviously, you know, it's pretty straightforward. You want to wait for your pitch. Usually wait on the fastball. I'm going to say that a lot in this, uh, in this video. Wait for your pitch. We hit it real well. Is that going to get caught? Okay, we're not going to get lucky right there. So we're going to... Score at least, that's one out I still recommend playing on. And then also with Trey Turner right here, if you get on base, you also, which obviously if you don't get on base, if you still have five runs to get with two outs, you might as well restart. If you get on base with Trey Turner right here, they still will not contest you to steal a base. Let's see if I can do it right here. Yes, we are going to get on base. Um, so the same thing goes we can steal second we can steal third and they're not going to try and throw us out obviously don't take like three steps off you don't even have to do one because they're not even going to make a throw down this is considered where they're down by so much sure just have it so that's what i recommend doing i do use x wings for pretty much this entire thing uh edwin diaz he is you know the more uh the most fearsome pitcher that you're going to face uh, he usually comes in around when you have six or seven runs, depending on how many guys you have on base. What I would say for him is he throws a lot of fastballs, wait on the fastballs once again. Otherwise, unfortunately, there's just going to have to be a lot of getting lucky. It's not really going to... It's kind of up to the game at that point. Wait on the fastballs, wait for your pitch, put a good swing on it. I used X wings this entire time. Unless maybe you get with Rendon against Luis Avion, which is what happened. The way I beat this, it took me until the 18th inning to do it. And I finally hit a walk-off. It was insane. Um, so then maybe with Rendon against Avion, you can do a power swing. But otherwise, just stick in there. Remember, you do have Sean Doolittle in your bullpen. So don't worry about taking out your pitcher. He'll still be the guy you want to work with. And uh, yeah, good luck. This took me so long to do. At this point, I think I'm going to hop into pretty much all of these so you can get the atmosphere down with me. Uh, Yelich, we have to hit for the cycle. We're at Polo Grounds. Uh, once again, the same thing goes as Sean Green. If you get out your first at bat, you might as well quit. There's no point in going forward. Here's a perfect example. Right here, I might be able to... Okay, I probably wouldn't be able to get an inside the park home run uh, anyway... But I would always get the triple first because that will probably be the hardest thing for you. The home run, what you want to do is try to be a little bit early and pull it. You know, it is 257 feet down the right field line. That's going to be your easiest way to get a home run. Maybe you'll hit another gapper. Um, but for sure, try and get the triple out of the way first. The single, it's pretty obvious. It's just going to happen. Um, once again, if you are in a three ball count, you're going to have to swing. There's no ifs and buts about it you have to go with it um i did mix x and power swings the majority of time what i did right there when i got the triple was an x swing once again the pci is quite large but it's all up to your preference whichever you usually use for these you know one plate appearance home run missions i a lot of times use x um don't swing at garbage. That's obviously another key component. I'm not completely focused, obviously, because I'm reading off of a script. And I'm also, you know, talking to you guys. But make sure and do those. Um, so get the triple out of the way first. Be advised and keep in mind of what you need. So if you... Um, you know, if you only need a double, don't keep trying to go for a triple or, or a home run, obviously. And uh, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Once again, this is going to be the same thing as the Sean Green. It's going to take time. It's going to take getting some luck. We got our triple and a single right there. So now what I would do is just try to pull one down the line and hopefully get one more gap or Yelich has a good amount of speed. And yeah, once again, good luck. This fun one, we have pitchers being hitters and players who have pitched before going up against you. I'll be honest, this was the easiest one by far for me. I had no trouble doing it. I got it on the first try. 
that is pretty inopportune. Um, I don't really have a whole lot of tips. What I do have for you is, um, of course, wait on the fastballs. That is the biggest thing that you're going to have to do throughout all of these moments um, because that's usually what you get the most consistent results out of rather than breaking balls. Sure, if it's a hanger, sometimes. And also, keep in mind, do what do what works for you. If you prefer hitting breaking balls, swing at those more. Don't listen to me saying just swing at the fastballs. It's all up to your discretion. That's just what I recommend. Wait on the fastballs. Um, pitchers do hit surprisingly well. That is something that you're going to learn within this. I hit a no doubt home run. I think it was with Bumgarner. And I scored like five, six runs in the first inning. A lot of them usually have around like 30 contact, 30 power, 40 contact, 40 power. Um, so that's what you're going to have to do. It's a six inning game. Keep in mind, I don't think there's really any goals. You just have to win the game. And uh, once again, I use X wings. None of these guys have a lot of vision. You go up against Shohei Otani first. Uh, so your PCI is never going to be big. Power swinging is just going to decrease it. And you don't have a lot of contact to fall back on. So I would say X-Wing works best. And it's going to kind of just happen for you. It wasn't that difficult for me. Let me know if you have any more trouble. And I can see if I can scrounge together any more advice. Third to last one, here we have Babe Ruth, I'll be honest, again, this was very, very easy for me, I did it in my first try, I hit home runs, my first two at bats, just missed my third, fortunately I got a fourth at bat and I hit a home run to clutch it out in my first try, and this is going to be pretty straightforward, once again, you're going to want to wait for those fastballs, this time I did power swing, Babe Ruth, I really like his swing, I really have it down so I feel comfortable enough to power swing, and you're going to have a real big PCI. Um, same thing goes, uh, sit on the fastballs. This is against Michaelis, not a great pitcher, uh, per nines wise against your maxed out contact and power that Babe Ruth has. Um, three ball counts, once again, you're going to have to swing at it. You really have no other choice. Um, of course, you want to be on time with your swings. It's not like a polo ground situation. Once again, the same thing goes as the Yelich and Green one. If you don't get a hit or if you don't hit a home run your first step back, you might as well quit. Um, and yeah, power swinging is what I would uh, what I would suggest for this. I think that does work the best. Another situation right here, three ball count. Even if it's up at my eyes, I'm going to have to swing. Um, I didn't right there, but I I'm just, like I said, I'm not completely focused. You're going to want to swing because a walk does no good for you. That might as well just be an out. Um, you have a lot of stats on your side, but once again, it's going to have to be luck when it comes down to it. And now we're going to get into the real disgusting moments. Contact is king right here. I mean, the premise behind this is just absurd. You have guys with pretty much maxed out power, and you have to contain them from hitting a ball 250 feet. So, you know, you're at polo grounds right here. We're going to start out with the hitting tips that I have for you. Um, pretty much everybody is going to have around 50 to 65 power that you're going to see. Um, if you don't hit a home run in your first, uh, in this first inning, you might as well restart. You want to get those out of the way. I had an instance where I had two home runs. Um, I didn't get it. And it went into the 12th inning. Eventually, they walked it off. I'll touch on that a little bit more once we get to the pitching half. Um, I did use the X swing. Power swinging might work for you. Obviously, don't contact swing. They don't have a whole lot of power to begin with, so that really makes no sense to do such. Um, they actually made a throwing error. We might get thrown out right there. That is some cheese. We actually get in there. Um, of course, once again, the same thing I said for Yelich. Yeah, you want to pull it down the line. Um, I do. I did hit a good amount of home runs from getting into the gap, and that's why I think contact swinging is best. You're going up against Nolan Ryan, who's going to really um, diminish your PCI size, but pulling the ball does work best. They have enough power to hit those line drive home runs, 250, 275 feet, so that's what I would recommend recommend um always go for the inside of the parker triples do not help you one bit of course you have to win the game so if it's like a tie game um that might be a situation right there we pull it um or kind of pull it that was an x-wing right there we were squared up with it um 
once again, I would more so recommend swinging at the fastballs. If it's in a good spot, like a curveball right there, go ahead and swing at it. All up to your discretion once again. Um, if you go up about six to seven runs, I would recommend just bunting away. There's no point. Um, this is the way I see it. A 15-minute loss is a lot better than a 30-minute loss. If you're going to give up a walk-off homer in the uh, eighth inning, it might as well be in the fourth inning. So bunting will just help speed the game up. And to be honest with you, the chances they're going to score seven runs without any of those being a home run is not very likely. Moving on to the pitching tips. This is where I think most people in this moment are going to struggle. The way I did this is you're going to want to throw low Onto the pitching tips. This is where a lot of people are going to run into issues. You want to spam low changeups, low curveballs, low sliders, and when you're getting those righty on righty matchups, I think you pretty much only have right handers, yes. Um, then what I would recommend is using this combo, throw sinkers inside. It helps if you use pure analog because that gives you the most control and especially if you're really good at hitting your spots, it's going to help. I would use that sinker down low and then the fastball up high. Perfect spot with Babe Ruth right here. Runs don't hurt you. They won't really hurt you. Home runs will. Do not be afraid about intentionally walking him. It's a lot better to give up a run to make it a 2-1 game, which I'm going to have to score anyway. I'm going to have to still get two more home runs. Um, there's no point. If you're scared about Babe Ruth righty on lefty, I would be too. He ended my career a couple times here. Um, I would recommend to do that. Like I said, just keep throwing those changeups down low to below the zone. Um, once again, they get a couple hits it's not going to be the end of the world. The home run is going to be the end of the world, and they're a hell of a lot less likely to hit it when you're throwing it below the zone. Keep in mind who you're facing. Guys like Gallo and Baez are going to be a lot more eager and a lot more, um, they're going to chase a lot more stuff, so keep that in mind as well. Um, also... Uh, do mound visits. That's another big thing. Base is loaded right here and get your confidence up a little bit. It does help even if it's uh, it just seems like a little bit. It's going to help. You get a double play right here. They get a run. So be it. We get two outs. That's the big thing to come forward about it. Also, nobody with the exception of Javier Baez, at least in their starting lineup, is going to hit an inside the park home run on you. Um, you know, and even he, I think he has 80 speed. Not all the time are they going to do it. They tend to be on the cautious side a lot. A lot of times where you probably could get an inside the park home run, they don't end up trying for it. Uh, but this is something I do recommend. If they hit the ball out in the outfield and you think you might have a shot at it, you don't think so, but there's a shot, just go to where the ball is going to end up. Don't risk missing the ball because that's when somebody with 50 speed could hit an inside the park home run. So a lot of times they'll hit it into the you know right field, center field gap. I just have each row, just go for the ball. Don't don't or, you know, go for where the ball is going to end up. Don't try to catch it on the fly because that's where you're going to get burnt. Um, if you don't hit the three home runs, this is what I was talking about. Uh, you're at a kind of sticky situation. So I think I was up seven to one in the game. What I did is I just intentionally walked guys all the way up until they were going to tie it. I threw balls in the dirt and then the catcher, I threw it over the second baseman's head. I got a red throw and eventually they get enough runs to tie it which still doesn't count as the home run which is what will end this game um, and then you try your chances in extra innings when that happened to me I didn't end up winning it I couldn't hit that home run but that's kind of your only choice because you're not going to have the bottom of the ninth. This one is going to tear your hair out. This is one very frustrating moment. Um, once again, if you guys have any other questions, make sure and let me know. This is the best advice that I did find, however. And finally, it all leads up to this one, the big bad boss battle on legend difficulty. This one is going to be interesting. We start out pitching, so we're going to do our pitching tips first. It's going to be a similar yet still different approach from the last con. Contact mission. Now, I still recommend do the changeups, do the knuckle curveballs. 
I get Garrett Cole every time I play this and I go up against Bob Gibson, which I think you're always going to go up against. I don't know who your pitcher is going to be, but Garrett Cole works great for this um, because he has a two seamer that you can throw once you're inside against righties and a good um, fastball that goes 100 miles per hour. But once again, you want to keep spamming the change up and the knuckle curve in the slider down low in the strike zone. That's what's going to help you. That play by Honus, you know what really, really helps in this? Having good defenders. Sometimes it's hard if you don't have the best team. You have to choose either hitting or defense. Um, but if you have guys who can do both, like Honus, use them. I turned, I don't even, probably six double plays or more in this. They really come up clutch. Um, you can't do the same exact approach because walks and runs will kill you. You know, once you give up your third run, you are over. So um, in the previous one, if you have bases loaded and you're going up against Babe Ruth, you can maybe intentionally walk him and it's not going to kill you. You can maybe still be real picky. This time, you cannot. If you have bases loaded, you might have to throw a fastball down the middle or make damn sure that you can locate your changeups in the strike zone um, to not walk them because one run is going to make things a lot worse on you. I didn't end up giving a single run. Um, I shut him out. I think it was 10 to nothing when I ended up beating this one, um, but it took me a lot of tries. Mound visits are still going to be your key. They give you a little bit more confidence, which could be the difference of you getting out of a critical situation. Also, do not be afraid to use each and every reliever that you have on your staff. Of course, it's going to help if you have the same type of relievers that I mentioned. Um, Kirby Yates did really well. Trevor Hoffman did great. Guys with good curveballs and good breaking balls are going to really help you out. And if they have a sinker, that makes them just even better. A two-seamer works alike you can you know spam them and jam them a lot of times if you locate it they're not going to hit a home run off of you and once again the good defenders is very vital if you do have that luxury on to the hitting tips as you can see obviously the scoreboard doesn't look too pretty if you give up a run in the first inning obviously quit out i'm just trying to give you these tips so make sure if you do give up a run in the first inning you might as well quit at that point um because it's going to set you back what a couple of minutes no big deal um as far as the hitting goes you want to hit a home run in the first inning. You have to hit five home runs in this moment. The total requirements, 10 hits, five home runs, eight runs, and you can only give up two runs. You can't give up a third, and obviously you have to win. Um, so you're going to face Bob Gibson every time. What I would think that you want to do, this is one approach, is stack your lineup with lefties if you have really good power lefties, and then or switch hitters, of course, and then on your bench, put right-handers you know this is my bench i have vlad bias frank thomas and rio muto um which i probably could have johnny bench there as well because you know and i don't have that lineup in right now but you guys get the idea if you have a lot of lefties you're going to be able to jump bob gibson and have an advantage on him and once they take him out i think they have a majority of righties in their bullpen um they have two lefties or really it's only Gossage and Wagner. Um, so usually Gossage was first out of the pen and then Wagner was second from what I uh, from what I saw. They don't bring in the starters, um, but I would then uh, put righties on my bench to also complement my team. That's pretty vital in my opinion. Um, Bob Gibson's gonna throw a lot of fastballs. He has the slider, sinker, curveball, change up in the four seam. This is difficult because he throws 100 plus miles per hour on legend difficulty, which just amplifies that velocity. So you're gonna have to be ready for those fastballs, which is why I would recommend pretty much just sit on them. If it's a breaking ball, don't even swing at it. Just wait solely on the fastball, and that's gonna help you out. And of course, work counts, work walks, that's your friend. He doesn't have the best control for this, so walks are going to really help you out. Like I said, make sure and hit a home run in the first inning. It's going to be tough if you have to get those in a late game situation. Also, uh, do not forget the hits. Um, you won't get the bottom of the ninth because you have to score eight runs and you can only give up two. Uh, so you're not going to get the bottom of the ninth inning unless you somehow... Um, at, at that point, if it's two to two in the top of the ninth, you might as well quit. I don't think you should 
bank on scoring six uh six something runs in the last inning at that point you might as well quit out um use substitutions to your advantage like i said i would have a lot of lefties and then complement it with righties and also as far as that goes it helps if you have versatility on your bench honus wagner is perfect he can play literally everywhere except i think uh second base and catcher um but yeah have those guys that can sub in this was a really hard moment for me like i said i shut him out 10 to, or i think it was nine to nothing actually but you get the point um no it was 10 to nothing i think i only hit home runs which is crazy and they were all solo home runs as well um and i was down to my last at bat bottom of the eighth i only had nine hits and i hit a walk off or not a walk off but i hit a home run to clinch it um so what i would recommend as time ended up for me where I think I had Yelich, it was Wagner versus Yelich. I pinch it Frank Thomas for Yelich, and he hit a home run. That was huge. That really saved my ass. And then I was able to put in Ted Williams. And another time came up where I it was still a lefty. I think it was Lou Gehrig, or it was a it was a different lefty. I ended up bringing Javier Baez in, and I was able to swap him with Willie Mays because Baez can play center field. You're gonna have to notice things like that. It really Really helps to have versatility within there um, because it does help to have an advantage. I will note Gossage is going to really throw a lot of sinkers against you, which could be tough for some people, especially righty on righty inside. He throws them hard, so if you can't move down that far, I would recommend trying to sit on it, kind of. Um, and then Wagner's a bit different. He really likes to mix it up, that slider and curveball, especially when you're a left-handed batter like Griffey. He's going to eat you up, and he's going to be pretty damn accurate with those as well, to the point where it's like... It's not a slider where it's uh, just a uh, waste pitch, where it's just garbage filthy um like in the dirt it's gonna be pretty much on the black so it's do i swing do i not swing so that's when you would like to have a righty in to face him uh instead of having a lefty so i'd recommend doing that otherwise that's really all the tips i have to give for this one hopefully that did help you out um once again this is a very very tough um moment set this is not for the faint of heart and i think the biggest tip i can give for you is try to keep a level head try i it's difficult i raged a couple of times especially during the nationals one where i hit the ball right on the button and it was right at a guy and it's like are you serious and that's once again where the luck factor comes in you're gonna have to be lucky that's just how moments extreme is um i had something to preoccupy me i was watching podcast I, it was joe rogan and the h3 podcast find something whether it's youtube whether it's netflix whether it's you know nba nfl that kind of thing find something something to preoccupy yourself so you have it on in the background but also make sure and focus so don't have it something so damn good so don't have breaking bad on because that's so captivating you're gonna have to watch it maybe make sure the content isn't all that good so maybe put on gums um but yeah like i said those are my tips if you guys have any other questions make sure and leave them down below in the comment section i'll gladly help you to all um to every point that i can you know i'm really hoping that uh this video is going to help out if you did enjoy make sure to leave a like down below subscribe if you guys are new we just hit 18k thank you guys so much for the incredible support hope you guys are great today there comes out